Hello, my name is Isaac V. Norris, and I'm a licensed architect. I am proud to be a part of this year's Black History Month Taste of Soul virtual event. This is an opportunity for me to present to you African-American architects. We're gonna introduce a few of the many seen and unseen. Hope you enjoy. People of color have always been architects and designers and builders, whether seen or unseen. People of color have designed and created spaces and environments for living, worship, and safety. Shelter is a basic need of any human being, but architecture goes beyond. Western cultural thought and its paradigms of systematic oppression of the darker race have chose not to respectfully acknowledge African-American architects as designers and builders of this country. Architecture is defined as the process and the product of planning, designing, and constructing buildings or other structures. We as African-American architects and designers have created spaces that do more than shelter. We have created buildings and spaces that convey beauty and hope. This systematic oppression of the African-American architect has led to underrepresentation and lack of visibility in the profession. One would say in our urban areas and in the United States in general, we need architects of a diverse nature who can deal with issues of design related to diverse communities. To this day, of the 116,000 licensed architects in the United States, just 2% are Black, and of that, Black women represent a mere 0.2% of the total licensed architects. These statistics have been worse or unchanged for the last 50 years. Part of the problem is that if you can't see an architect of color working in your community, maybe you think that is not a career for you. We must remember that architects since the beginning of, of time have designed and created their own communities and structures for their own communities. So may this presentation increase your knowledge of African-American architects and their contributions to the betterment and beautification of our built environment. We are and will always be designers and builders of our environment, seen, unseen, or unacknowledged. So if you didn't know before, you know now. Robert Robertson Taylor was an architect and educator. He was the first African-American graduate of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He was also the first accredited African-American architect. His father, Henry Taylor, was born into slavery and later freed in 1847. Henry Taylor was a carpenter and businessman. In 1892, Robert Robertson Taylor served as campus architect at Tuskegee Institute at the direction of Booker T. Washington. Up until 1932, many of the buildings designed on the Tuskegee Institute campus were designed by Robert Robertson Taylor. Julian Abel, is an architect who designed many large public buildings that still stand today. Julian Abel was the chief designer at the firm of Horace Trombauer. Between the years 1924 and 1954, Julian Abel was the primary designer of the West Campus of Duke University. He was also designer of the Philadelphia Art Museum.
Brittany Woodson Tandy was born in 1885 in Lexington, Kentucky. He attended Tuskegee University where he studied architectural drawing. He wanted to become an architect, so he went to Cornell University and he graduated with a degree in architecture. He later became the state of New York's first registered black architect with offices on Broadway in New York City. Tandy's most famous commission was probably Villa Warro, the $250,000 mansion of Harlem millionaire, uh, Madam C.J. Walker. Although his work is not celebrated and taught in majority architectural schools, Paul R. Williams is probably one of the most well-respected and accomplished architects of his time. Paul R. Williams was known as the architect to the stars. His practice was based out of Los Angeles, California. Paul R. Williams designed homes for stars such as Lucille Ball, Lon Chaney, and many others. At age 25, he won an architectural competition that inspired him to open his own firm. He perfected the skill of drawing upside down because his white clients did not feel comfortable sitting next to a black man. He sat across from them and drew so his clients could watch him draw right side up. Paul R. Williams was the first African-American member of the American Institute of Architects. Norma Merrick Sklerick was the nation's first African-American woman to pass her architectural licensing exam to become a licensed architect in the state of New York and California. Norma Sklerick held the distinction of partner in numerous Los Angeles-based architectural firms. She was also a principal at the world-famous architectural firm of Skidmore, Owings and Merrill. Norma Sklerick enjoyed serving as lead architect on many projects. Almost always, she was the only woman, black woman, at the table. J. Max Bond is known for his high profile designs, such as the MLK Center in Atlanta, Georgia, the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute, and the One World Trade Center in New York City. He also served as a designer of the National Museum of African American History. Bill Freelong was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and he was inspired at an early age by the architecture of Julian Abel. In 1990, Phil Freelon founded the Freelon Group. In 2009, along with partners J. Max Bond and David Adajay, they were selected unanimously to design the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History. David Adajay, I consider to be the architect of our time. He has designed many large scale public works buildings worldwide. He is Ghanaian and truly expresses his culture in his design. David Adajay is an architectural theorician and writer of many published books on architecture, planning and design. Thank you for allowing me to introduce to you the foundation of African-American architects. 
I apologize to the many I have left out of my presentation. There are so many more architects who have contributed to the design and shaping of our physical environment. I hope you have found these trailblazers of the mostly white male dominated profession interesting and most of all, inspirational. We are the few of many seen and unseen. I am the proud owner of IVNA, a community-based architectural firm here in the urban core of Grand Rapids. Here are a few projects I've designed within the city. We are all connected by our common history. We were able to become architects because of those predecessors who led the way. For me, my architectural mentor was Judson Jones, the first African-American architect to own a firm here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Marshall Purnell, who owns the firm Devereaux and Purnell in Washington, DC, was the first African-American to become president of the 160 year old American Institute of Architects. Linda Haight was the first African-American woman to be licensed to practice in the state of Michigan. A new generation of skilled African-American architects has been birthed by our city and they are prepared to offer culturally sensitive design solutions that embrace diversity and promote equity. Thank you for your interest, and I hope you are enriched by my presentation.